All right. Let's do this. Yeah. Because you were you were doing your due diligence on this week one of football with your Texans. And it sounds like you stumbled into a storyline about C.J. Stroud that you feel like uh, we need to know. I did because I was feeling it. Uh, I was feeling this way. So it's not a criticism. I think it's a very, very, very good thing. Um, I think C.J. Stroud kind of told us all we need to know about his place in the NFL and what he can do for this team in week one. Actually, more specifically, on three plays. I think like, well, let me let me put it this way. How many quarterbacks in the NFL – do you expect greatness from? I'm not talking about they can be great. Ooh. Like you expect, like it's Sunday, your team is playing. One thing you don't have to worry about is your quarterback is going to be great. How many of those are there? Like I gave some examples of the other ones that can be great. Like Anthony Richardson can be great. He can also be really bad. Yeah. Justin Herbert can be great, but he really hasn't consistently done it. And I threw Baker Mayfield in there for Figgy because he can, he was great. But there are a lot of quarterbacks that can be great, but how many are there truly? Like if they are not great, it's a disappointment on the Yes, like you expect to, it. Yeah. Uh, I got, let me see, one, two, three, four. I'm standing on four for certain. Like every Sunday, you know they're going to be great. Don't worry about You can worry about a lot of things, but don't worry about him. He's going to be great. There, I mean, there's some possibles in here, but I, I got four definites, and you know what? I think you might go maybe if you're talking about C.J. Stroud, that might be five. I, I, I am talking about C.J. Stroud. Uh, I, I think that's where, you know, the development that we've expected, we already saw it. It feels slow, though. Uh, <laughs> it does. I feel it? like I'm missing something. But, no, I, I don't think you are. Okay. Like, like, do you expect Brock Purdy to be great every week? No, but that's that might just be more about me. I, <laughs> I know, I know, I still guys. I've tried to exercise the hateration that I have yeah. for that man, especially when it comes to like his draft position and those types of things. Um, I know that there's a lot of system he's handling his business. Great, great is just a weird, a weird uh, notion for me. Him there with him. Matt Stafford is one of those as well. Where I'm like, I think, I think, but I'm, I'm not sure. But I. Think, but do you expect it every week? Yeah, I think that I, he probably used to jump up. I there. think you can expect right. that every week from C.J. Stroud. Now, let me let me, let me just kind of lay it out okay. for you. Uh, because there were three plays, uh, as great as Joe Mixon was, th- there's an easy argument to be made. You know, C.J. Stroud won that game. You know, C.J. Stroud won that game with the big-time conversions yeah. uh, on third and fourth down, nine of nine for 85 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, and then there was that, that play from when he fell down to his knees, shoveled it, uh, to uh, Brevin to Brevin Jordan, Jordan. in first down, yeah. That that is something that you expect. Uh, the play across the body, no, no, no. Oh, great throw, <laughs> you know, to, to Nico Collins. Those are the types of things that are like, they, they as you mentioned, no, 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 yes, that are only yeah. reserved for certain people. Yes, and you expect that. And then of course the ball placement. It was a great catch. I'm not trying to minimize that, but I think there's maybe three or four quarterbacks, and maybe these are them. Uh, that you're that you're looking at, yeah. That can actually make that throw in that window with that defense uh, to that spot in that moment in the fourth quarter, you know, on a day where he's not his best. Yeah. I think that's also worth noting. Like that was not his best performance, and we all know that. Yeah. So I, I I think like those plays show just how we almost take him for granted, which is a good thing. Like like when was the last time you're like, okay, well, you know, I know Matt Schaub's going to perform, you know. Uh, I, I know, I know, I know, Damn. I know this is going to happen or that's going to happen. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. And, and D'Amico Ryan's, uh, talked about this, uh, on his coaches show, which I thought he was very loose, very comfortable and talked about it yesterday. Starting with the protection, it kind of broke down. Dare saved us there on the edge to give CJ like one more hitch to be able to deliver. You talk about the accuracy. I mean, a perfect ball corner had really tight coverage. Mm. I mean, it's just when you need your playmakers to step up at at a crucial moment in the game for Nico and CJ to make that play. Like I had a first, <laughs> I had a front row seat to see it, and yeah. I knew he got the knee down. It was just like, wow. Like, that was big time. Wow, that was big time. Yeah. And what's beautiful is that is man starting second year. Yeah. Right? Like, just... If you and I mean you're talking about this flat out, and I think that he's reach, reaching the point where we just kind of got to talk about it without any level of like bumpers or you know training wheels or whatever. With mm-hmm. with all due respect, but if you put that frame, you had that framing on it again, where it's like this is second year starting second year quarterback. Mm-hmm. That's incredible, man. It really and truly is. It's amazing. Uh, only three quarterbacks had a higher quarterback rating. You say he wasn't at his best. 
Only three quarterbacks. <laughs> That's a funny thing. To uh, only three quarterbacks had a higher uh, quarterback rating than uh, than C.J. Stroud week one. Uh, Derek Carr, Baker Mayfield, and Josh Allen. Now, of all those three guys, maybe Josh Allen's the only one that you would expect. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so C.J. is going to be at the top of his game. You know, we're sitting here saying, oh, he wasn't at his best. Oh, wow, he's one of the best in the league right? <laughs> in that game. Yeah, in that week. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think that's fair. I think that's – I appreciate you bringing that to the fore. Now I'm going to be a jerk and maybe take this a little bit uh, – well, I think there's a positive within this because I have been – yes, I will acknowledge, I have been harping on the safeties and the big play potential that happened within that game. Obviously, there were three big plays, you know, three 50-plus yard plays right yeah. in the course of this game. And it's funny because I don't even know if it's about the actual 50-yard plays, but – the possibility of all the other ones that simply were not connected on because Anthony Richardson is who he is right now. Mm -hmm. And so, like, there is a concern for me about the safeties, particularly like Jimmy Ward and what maybe degradation we might be seeing. Or, I mean, again, it's week one. I want to have that caveat in there as, you know, you get to a feel. But he has had injuries, as we talked about with B. Scott. He is 33 years of age. Like, mm -hmm. I do wonder what is real there or not. And then also we've seen some of the, some of the ways in which there can be some boomer bust potential that's not new to this year that has been with this secondary. However, I was listening to Payne and Pendergast, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. right mm -hmm. here on Sports Radio 610 every weekday, as you should. And uh, Seth Payne said something that I found to be really interesting that I think could possibly kind of shift some of the dynamic when we talk about the secondary. Oh, my bad. Kalen Bullock got 25 snaps in that game at safety. I, I honestly, I went through and just did a brief view. I went through and searched for the plays that he was in on, and um, I didn't see a whole lot to worry about. The biggest thing that coaches worry about is with a young player is, okay, can I trust this guy? Kalen Bullock didn't give you any reason not to trust him. Yep. He makes that interception. It was very, very nice. Plays 25 snaps in that game. I think he probably plays more snaps this week. Like we said with Jimmy Ward, man, athletically, maybe he's not the same guy anymore. Also, some of it's just on the stuff that you expect the veteran safety not to do is be in the right spot, pick up the routes, do all that stuff. Uh, after one game, I'm feeling more excited about the potential for Kalen Bullock than I am for, for how it might play out for Jimmy Ward this year. So we might start to see a little bit of the changing the changing the guard as, as they give Kalen Bullock more reps. I'm with him, too. I think that could be really – because, like, yeah. again, we're, this is where you go, oh, man, Eric Murray back there, right? Yeah. And what's funny is I don't know how much of this you go, like, oh, that was Eric Murray's fault. Like, Jimmy Ward ends up being the name and the number that pops up a decent amount. Kalen Bullock, 25 snaps. I think that yeah. was good for just under 50% of the snaps. You did not allow them to have the ball that much yeah. in this game. Yeah, there is that. Um, I, I, I am interested. What, what does that number tick up to very early on in the season when it comes to snap count, and how does that affect it? Because he already showed a propensity, propensity for being in the right place to where it allowed him to advantage, uh, take advantage of a wide receiver slipping in a, a errant football that he then picked up, picked off rather. Like I do, I, I was intrigued. My interest was piqued by his play and the possibility of maybe he can be that guy in the back yeah. uh, in the backs uh, of this defense that can help uh, limit some of those big plays. No, I, I'm, I'm right there with you. And uh, and it wasn't just like, okay, he had an interception. No, he actually had an, a chance for another one, to be honest. That's true. The, the, you yeah. know, so so there, was a, there was that, a guy that's just around the ball that can make some plays. At minimum, he earned the right to get more plays, to have more chances on the field. Yeah. I mean, there, there's no question you can say, all right, let's just tap the brakes here. No, they, he's earned the right to, to be out there. And I think there's also the upside factor uh, that, yes. that, that you have to consider. Now, now you, you would rather have the best player on the field in a big game, but he, like I said, he proved that he can be on the field and should be on the field. So now you kind of give him the benefit of the doubt because he does have that upside factor. Yeah, and I think that the Kalen yeah. Bullock thing is, is probably why you do not see Justin Simmons mm -hmm. on this team, right? I do think that when you look at veterans, it's like I think there is a fair – argument to be made and I'm sure this is one that's made by a lot of people just go make sure that you have the best guy on the field field and there is an easy argument to be made that Justin Simmons would have ha helped you have the best guy on the field but this game is not simply a now here and now game it's also a looking forward game and yeah. I think that part of that is like is he going to be a progress stopper and not necessarily that he's going to be a, a like in his demeanor or whatever but if he's not going to allow you to put a guy on the field that's going to give him the, the you know the, yeah. the experience that will allow him to become the guy that you need I think that that could have been some of the deciding factor as to why you don't see a Justin Simmons. Kalen Bullock looks like he might be ready to kind of blossom in some ways. Yeah, no question. There you go.